These meetings can deal with things like war and peace, trade and recognition, merger and acquisition, and much more. Even in the church, we have these kinds of meetings. As you move from St. Mark's Church to yoke with another congregation for your next chapter, there will be joint meetings together to make decisions about how, how exactly that will work. I know that your church council and the leaders at St. Mark's are working diligently on that. But they need to sit down with the partner and decide things together so that this can move ahead in a faithful and missional way. There are usually two aspects to summit meetings. There's the symbolic and the substantial. For a number of years, a couple of decades ago, our church body worked on an arrangement with the Episcopal Church whereby we could fully recognize each other as partners in the gospel. There were a lot of substantial issues that needed to be discussed so that that could be declared. I enjoyed those conversations that we had between our two churches. But I can remember the meeting at which our church and the Episcopal Church reached this agreement and at which it was finalized. And what I remember most about it was the symbolic. The two leaders, one of each church, standing on a podium in front of many people. And after the decision was announced, they embraced each other. That, for me, is a symbol of the decision that was made with all those other substantial issues. Today we bring to a close the season of Epiphany, and we witness each year when we do this a great summit meeting. It actually took place on a summit on top of a hill. And there were six participants in this meeting. Our Lord Jesus, the three disciples that he took, Peter, James, and John, and then these two characters from Hebrew scriptures, Moses and Elijah. And during the season of Epiphany each year, we see what Jesus was up to in his ministry, healing the sick, inviting people to follow him faithfully, caring for those who did, announcing the inbreaking of God's reign and rule, forgiving sins, casting out demons, preaching good news, and teaching his followers what it meant to follow him. And as we come to the close of this season, Jesus takes us up the mountain where we can see this great summit meeting that occurred. Peter, James, John, our Lord himself, joined by Moses and Elijah. And that summit meeting that took place on that hill is full of symbolism. Jesus is the new Moses. He came and he fulfilled the law of Moses and the law of the Hebrew Scriptures. The law of Moses continues to be a guide for us and continues in our life our lives to point out the need we have for a Savior. But Jesus came to bring that with his ministry of forgiveness, to bring that chapter to a completion. And his life of fulfilling the law of love, he symbolized God's desire to forgive and accept all people. You might remember, too, that Moses is known as a liberator. He brought his people out of slavery brought them to the promised land. Moses defeated the enemy of the people who held them against their will. And so Jesus is the new Moses who liberates people from bondage to sin and death. Moses took on the enemy of the Egyptians. Jesus takes on the enemies of sin and death and the power of the devil and offers us God's love and God's embracing forgiveness. And then there's Elijah, the great prophet and preacher. He had a message for God's people in his day. He called them back to faithfulness. He performed great miracles of power and strength. He stood before the powers of this world 
as a solitary figure sometimes, armed only with the word of God. And people listened to him, and their lives were transformed. This Jesus is the new Elijah, the new preacher, the new speaker for God, God's very son. And then there were these who were speaking and consulting with one another. Jesus' presence was transfigured, and his appearance became dazzling, more dazzling, Mark tells us, than any bleach could ever make garments. If you've ever been at a summit meeting, a great convention or assembly, a consultation among or between partners and, and witness their unity, you know how exciting that is. So it is little wonder that these three disciples wanted to stay there and build each one of these characters, Jesus, Moses, Elijah, their own room so that they could stay there. But that wasn't going to happen. A cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from heaven announced that this one, the one whose appearance had become dazzling white before them, was God's very son, and they were to listen only to Jesus. Those are the words of that gospel reading that stand out for me this time. After this was all over, there was only Jesus. Only Jesus is all we need. Only Jesus' love. Only Jesus' presence. Only Jesus' forgiveness. Only Jesus' healing. And Jesus offers that to you. Each time we, work, we gather for worship, we too come to a summit meeting. Meeting Jesus is what happens when we open the scriptures, when we hear God's message to us. Meeting Jesus is what happens when we receive bread and wine, the very presence of Christ. Meeting Jesus is what happens when the community gathers. Meeting Jesus is what happens when people are brought to the waters of holy baptism. I know that this time of separation is hard for us, but I want you to know that those of us who gather here, the four of us, week in and week out to record these services, work hard in hoping that in seeing this, you too can meet Jesus wherever you're looking at it, in your living room, at your desk, at your dining room table. Viet works hard to edit and record these readings. Diana prepares the readings of scripture. Libby, the music that she brings to you, and whoever preaches, preaches in such a way that you meet Jesus in the same way that Peter, James, and John did. And that you know the joy of knowing Jesus because Jesus knows you. And so as we turn our attention from Epiphany sing our last hallelujahs, and we move toward Lent, we have only Jesus. But that's all you need, is to know Jesus who knows you, who loves you, and who brings God's grace and blessings to you. So be it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of faith far and near, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world, let us pray, have mercy, O God. For those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders and security guards, attorneys and advocates, civil servants and leaders of governments that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world, let us pray, have mercy, O God. For all who suffer this day, especially those we now name before you, aloud or in the silence of our hearts,
that Christ our healer transformed sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our living, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Gather into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Jesus Christ. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.